In George Orwell's classic 1984, the totalitarian government has something called the Ministry of Truth. The Ministry of Truth spit out propaganda and censored voices that they did not like. Biden tried to do something similar with the disinformation government board, and now GOA has sued to try to figure out what exactly they were doing. Let's talk about it. What is up, my sexy Wolverines? Welcome back to the channel. It is I, everyone's favorite investigative journalist and heavyweight champion of news, John Crump. And today we are brought to you by you wonderful people. You wonderful people can make all this happen by just signing up at my locals at johncrump.locals.com. It's like Patreon, but without the communism. Okay, if you can do me a favor, like, comment, and subscribe. It helps out tremendously, and it gets my voice out there. Today, we're going to be talking about DHS and Gun Owners of America and Gun Owners Foundation, those two are linked, lawsuit against DHS over a non-response to a FOIA request. A FOIA request is a Freedom of Information Act request, which means they ask for something and the government has to give it back to them or they have to tell them why they're not giving it back to them. In this case, neither happened. The two groups filed the FOIA request and DHS did not respond. And when GOA and GOF asked for updates, DHS still didn't respond, which they legally have to do. So that left the two gun groups with no other option but to sue them in federal court, trying to get a judge to demand DHS answer the FOIA request. And a judge saying that is very, very likely because DHS by law have to respond to a FOIA request and they didn't do that. So this should be uh, pretty much a slam dunk win. Nothing is ever a slam dunk in court cases, but this one should be. Just so you know what type of information they are asking for. And I'm not gonna read these verbatim. I'm gonna paraphrase a lot of them, but here it goes. They want records regarding the formation of the board, which, you know, obvious that they would want that. And that includes emails and anyone involved in the board input. They want records identifying those who have been chosen to sit on the board and how the executive director was picked. They want job descriptions and positions that will be on the board for the board and their staff. They want records reflecting the processes used to select the board members. They want records describing what type of information will be analyzed and how that information will be collected. They want methods, roles, procedures, and limitations of the board and how they will surveil American people and analyze and classify the disinformation. They also want records describing how any disinformation will be corrected, limited, or refuted, or removed. This is big. Are they going to tell social media platforms they have to remove it? Or are they going to put out a statement saying this is why it's wrong? They didn't really say when they were forming this unconstitutional board. They want records explaining how free speech, civil liberties, and civil rights will be protected. They want any historical, legal, or other records that which have been consulted by the board as to the statute of freedom after government officials declare themselves to be arbitrators of truth and seek to suppress alleged false or untrue, usually politically unpopular. That's actually what they wrote in here, usually politically unpopular. Unpop Viewpoint. They want to know if the board has any connection to the Democratic National Committee, Mark Elias, Eric Holder, Hillary Rodham, Barack Obama, Twitter, Facebook, including Mark Zuckerberg, Google, the National Security Agency, CNN, MSNBC, including Rachel Maddow. It actually says that there. And Fox News. Oh, also AOC, of course. They want to know if the DHS has any legal authority to create a ministry of truth. It actually says ministry of truth there, another thing. AKA 
Disinformation Governance Board, and any former opinions by the U.S. Department of Justice about the legality of the board. They also want to know if Elon Musk buying Twitter has anything to do with this. If you don't know, Elon Musk is in a bid to buy Twitter, and he's already said that it's going to become a free speech platform, and he's even going to ban, unban, sorry, unban Donald Trump. And this is the best part. They want to know if DHS took best practices from George Orwell's book, 1984, or experience of the East German Stasi or similar authoritarian governments. Basically, if you don't know, the East German Stasi was the East German secret police that used to kidnap people in the middle of the night from their homes because they were the political opposition. They are suing for this information to be released, and they are suing for legal fees. If you don't know if the government loses a FOIA case, they have to pay legal fees. So the government might be paying GOA and GOF's legal fees, which means Stephen Stimbolier and Rob Wilson will be getting a paycheck from this, which is awesome because they do an awesome job. Right now, big tech has a huge, huge monopoly on information. Twitter is the public square. Facebook is where your grandmother goes to. Instagram is where I hang out at. Facebook is another hangout of mine. If big tech can censor people and the government can tell big tech who to censor, they can shut down all political opposition, which means we're not free anymore, which means without freedom of speech, we are just slaves. Freedom of speech is not to protect popular speech. Freedom of speech is to protect unpopular speech because there's no reason to protect popular speech because everyone's for it, majority of people. I'm going to give you a little example of what happened to me. During the run-up to the 2020 election, Facebook was censoring people that said Kamala Harris did not believe in the individual's right to own a firearm. Kamala Harris did state she did not believe an individual has the right to own a firearm in her Heller amicus brief. I posted her amicus brief in no context and it was marked false. I pushed back against Facebook and they finally removed the false flag on everyone. But then they also banned my account. I did file an FEC complaint against Facebook and it took forever for them to look in on it, but nothing ever really happened of it. Biden became president and then his people just kind of like pushed it aside. But we need to get the government out of fact checking. That is 100% not right for the government to do. The government should not be taking sides on anything like that. So what can you do? You guys did your job. I saw a Salon article where they were very, very upset that the disinformation governance board was shut down. But that's good because we don't need that. We did our job by putting pressure on the government to back off and they did. But more battles are to come. All right, guys, that's it for me. I got to get some sleep. But stay ever vigilant, stay ever free, keep in the fight. I'm out of here. Wolverines, motherfucker.